the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless God for yet another day, another session that God has given us to share the word of the Lord with all of you that have tuned in. And I would like to welcome you. I would like to usher you into his presence uh, that we may walk together in this uh, way of breaking bread and continue with the apostles' doctrine and God will do us good and before we start, I would like us to start with a lot of prayer. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I would like to thank you once again for yet this chance. You have given us the opportunity to listen to the word of the Lord. Dear God, I pray that God, you may touch my mind and put thy word in my mouth that like I say to Jeremiah. That dearly, dear my God, even Father, touch my lips, O God, Almighty, that the words that are going to come out of my mouth Obey your word, not my word, O God Almighty, and let it, Jehovah Master, touch lives, Jehovah God, my listeners. Them that are going to listen to this word, Jehovah Father, they be benefited. Uh, they be partakers of this glorious word of the Lord. I thank you, Jehovah God, for even the Bible says, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by the every word that proceedeth uh, from the mouth of God shall men live. And Father, I pray that this word, who proceed from your throne, who proceed from your mouth, O God Almighty. I just be a vessel, I just be an instrument that you can use. Father God, I thank you. Be with us from the beginning to the end of the service. In Jesus' mighty name I do pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome once again. We would like to thank God for church. We would like to appreciate God for uh, yet this chance. God has given us to realize that we cannot survive, we cannot live without the word of the Lord. Uh, we cannot make it uh, even a single day without this word because our own survival, our own life, dependence and depends on the word of the Lord that we receive. Uh, that is why the word of God the says that we must be fed. Uh, because if we are not fed, if we are not fed with this word, then you don't stand a chance uh, of survival. I would like to, you to note that the word of God says that the church and teaches that the church is both an organization and also an organism. In other words, it has a life. It has something, it has and anything that have life have to be fed. And at the same time, it has structures of governance. And that is why it has to be managed and learned like an organization. And that is why you find the Bible say even in the church not only are there gifts of the, of the Spirit, but there are also gifts that are given to govern the church. In the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, the 12th chapter, a uh, first of scripture lie there, the Bible says, uh, first number 27 in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. First number 28, the Bible says, And God have set some in the church. Uh, this is in the house of God. This is the church. First, the apostles, 
Secondary, there are prophets, that lay teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, and governments. That means there are structures of governance. The church also is an organization. It has to be governed. It has to be uh, having people. The Bible is saying, uh, Lomas, the 12th chapter and verse number 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us. Uh, he says, whether prophesying, uh, let us prophesy according to the pro proportion of faith. Uh, verse number 7, he says, and our ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching. Verse number 8, the Bible say, or he that exhorteth or ex on exhortation, and he that giveth, let him do it with a simplicity, and he that ruleth, that is the word, govern, go governments uh, that learn the church. And he that ruleth, let him do it with the diligence. So you'll find there is a, uh, those gifts uh, that operate in the church to make the church uh, to be relevant, uh, the church to be accepted as an organization and also as an organism. Uh, so you'll find there are those uh, gifts that God has given even when you look at the life and the calling of Moses. Uh, Moses had different men that he was told to call and to choose. And one was what we call the ruling elders. Uh, these were men that were qualified in their own lights. They had the gifts, they had been trained uh, to be rulers. And he was told by God to make sure that he put them in charge of fifties, of hundreds, and even of tens. These were people that were helping Moses to govern, uh, to put order uh, in the church or even in the church that was in the wilderness. And then he was told to choose 70 men that God also, which God was going to come and take the spirit that was uh, upon uh, uh, Moses. And then he was to dispute it on the 70s so that they can again judge God's people. Now, these are the gifts of the Spirit. And so even in our local church and even in our later day church, and then we have these operations as a church operating under those structures of governance and also under the gifts of the Spirit, uh, where now the Bible is saying so that now as an organism that it can grow thereby. And that is why something that have life then it has to be fed in the book of john the 20th chapter jesus talking to peter the 21st chapter and jesus is saying to peter do you love verse number 15 uh, so jesus is talking to peter and he's saying so when they had dined jesus said unto simon peter simon son of jonas lovest thou me more than this he saith uh, he saith unto him yea lord Thou knowest that I love thee. Then he's, he said unto him, feed. Now something that is being fed, it means it has life. And without this feeding, it doesn't stand a chance of survival, of living and even growing, even to mature and to grow. It has to be fed like that child, naturally, or even you as a human being. Uh, for you to grow and for you to have strength, you need to have natural food. And the church also for it to be strong and to be vibrant and to, to grow, it needs to be fed. And even so Jesus repeated three, three times to Peter uh, to feed the, the frog. And Paul picked it up in the book of Acts, the 20th chapter. Uh, Paul calls for the elders of the church uh, from Ephesus. And when he, they came, he spoke to them and instructed them to feed uh, the church, to feed the frog. Uh, which the Holy Ghost, verse number uh, 28 of the book of Acts, the, 10th, uh, the 20th chapter, the Bible says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves. Uh, this is Apostle, uh, Apostle Paul talking to the elders of the church in Ephesus. And he said unto all the frog uh, over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, to feed. So the church, that which is fed, it is not only to be managed, the church not only needs to be managed in a structural way of governance, but also it needs to be fed. And it is fed with the word of God. Uh, we can go and learn uh, in the institution on how to manage uh, people, on how to manage resources, and even on how to manage uh, uh, church, uh, church governments. 
but we need also to have the word of God. This word of God will help the church to grow. And Peter again, St. Peter, so but the Bible is saying, Paul is saying to feed the church of God which, the, the, which he have purchased, purchased with his own blood. And Peter now again in First Peter, the fifth chapter, also is talking to the elders, uh, which he is also one of the elders. Uh, first number one, the elders which are among you, I exhort the same thing that Paul was doing to the elders of Ephesus. And he is talking to the elders and he is telling them they must be able uh, to feed the frog. So they must be able to make sure that they feed the church and the saints of God with the word of God. And he says, uh, uh, he says, uh, he says to the elders, uh, he says, uh, feed, verse number two, feed the frog. So he said it's the same thing, to feed the frog. And the reason why the frog is being fed is that they may grow thereby. We may, and we feed the church with the truth. Uh, we may have structures, we may have uh, uh, the ashes, uh, we may have the, the asherets in the church. Uh, this is for ease of governance, uh, to learn the congregation, to manage the people. Uh, but we need the man of God that is called of God, anointed and ordained of God, and his duty is to feed. And Peter is talking to the elders, and he said their duty is to feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. In other words, the church needs to be fed so that it can grow. In the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, are talking about the importance of feeding the church. That is why we keep on coming to you every now and then with the word of God. A time comes that we call for the staff meetings where we talk to the elders and the, we talk to the ushers and the usherettes. And we talk to different departmental members, and all what we talk to them about is on how the structures of governance, how to manage the people, how to manage the congregation, how to make it easier for people and comfortable for people to sit and enjoy the word of God, like Jesus, uh, after he had fed 5,000 uh, with the word of God, a time came he had to feed them with natural food, but he needed people to make them sit in, um, in groups of 50s. And he told his disciples, that is now governance. He told his disciples, make them sit in 50s, make them sit in 10s, make them sit in 100s, so that it can be easier to manage the process of feeding uh, the natural food. And even now that when we have uh, meetings, we have uh, general meetings, general conventions, uh, then we have our staff members sitting, uh, being taught on how to manage the congregation to make it easier uh, for the pastor to feed the people. So you'll find now, now the man of God now feeds them with the word. And the Bible says uh, in the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, he that descended in the same verse number 10 is the same also that ascended. And the Bible says uh, far above heavens, uh, all heavens, that he might fill all things. And after, for that to be done, he gave gifts. Now these are the gifts of Jesus Christ. He gave them to feed. Their work was to feed the congregation. Not now with natural food, but with the word of God. He said, verse number 12, for the, for the perfecting of the saints. You know, for the perfecting of the saints. Uh, for the work of the ministry and for the edifying, the feeding. That is the word. To edify is to feed. To edify is to feed the work of God. You as a child of God, as a Christian, you need to be fed. Not only do you need to be managed and to show how, where to sit when you come to the house of God, but you also need to be fed with the word of God that you may grow thereby. You may grow uh, uh, spiritually. You may grow. So to edify is to feed. So for the edifying of the body of Christ, that is the body. Like you have your own natural body, also, Jesus has his own natural body, and he is the head of that body. But that body needs to be fed. And the Bible is saying, verse number 15, the Bible is saying, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things. Now, the church is fed, the church, you as a child of God, and collectively as a church, as a congregation, is fed with the word of God that they may grow thereby. Now, that is a metaphor that is gotten from the human body. Like the human body needs food for it to grow, 
also the spiritual body of Jesus Christ, which is the church, need food for it to grow. That is why you cannot survive. A child of God cannot survive without the word of God. Even when the doors of the church are closed, then you see that this elder, this preacher, is coming to you because he realizes without you being fed with the word of God, then you are not going to be nourished. You are not going to mature. You are not going to grow. And that is why we come to you with this word of God. Like the natural body requires a food, natural food for it to grow. All the members of that body to grow. Then even the members of the body of Jesus Christ. Remember we said we are members of the body of Jesus Christ. And if we are members in particular, then every member need this food. For that body to grow holistic. For that body to have a uniformity in growth, then every part of that body, every member of that body need to be fed with the word of God that you may by speaking the truth. Now, the elders in the church, the preachers of the word of God, they speak the truth in love. So to facilitate the growth of this body of Jesus Christ, the spiritual growth of the church, even as the natural food is required for the natural body to grow. So you find as a man of God, I cannot feed you with any other thing for you to grow spiritually other than the word of God. So that now you may grow thereby. Uh, verse number 16, the Bible is saying, of whom the whole body, the whole body fitly joined together. That is why we are supposed to be connected. Like your natural physical body is fitly joined together. Every joint, every part is joined to the next and when the body is fed, the whole body, it, it, it benefits and it grows in uniform. It grows, you don't have some parts of the body that are weak and others that are not are stronger. But you find the whole body is getting stronger because it is benefiting from the same source. And even in the body of Jesus Christ, him being the head, then the Bible is saying, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth. So you'll find everybody, every part of that body is benefiting and not only benefiting, it turns around and it gives towards the growth and the benefit of the entire body. So like your hand, it is fed, but when it is fed, it is turned around and it starts taking care and benefiting the whole body. The legs, they benefit from the same feeding, but when the legs are needed for the benefit of the body, then you find the hand, the legs are there to carry the body. The feet is there to carry the body. So you find a child of God then is fed that they may grow thereby. You are compacted. I think in Colossians, the first chapter and first number 20, the second chapter and first number 19, that almost the same thing the Paul is saying. There are some people that don't hold to the body or to the head. And if they, then the body, the, there are some parts of the body that don't hold to the head, they don't stand a chance of survival. They don't stand a chance of growth because they are getting their nourishment. They are getting their nourishment and they are feeding from the head. You feed your body through the head, through the mouth. And once the body goes to the, the, um, the food goes to the body, then the body is nourished and is supposed to grow. Now the body of Jesus Christ is a fed from the body, from the head. And that is Jesus Christ. And not holding uh, the head from which the whole body by joints and bonds, bonds having nourishment ministered so ministered from the head you have to be connected you have to be connected to the head for for you to benefit from the nourishment and anybody not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bounds having nourishment having nourishment uh, having nourishment ministered in other words it is ministered from the head so you need then to make sure that this child of god uh, this individual is connected to the head and if you are connected then to the head then you are guaranteed on of nourishment then that which will facilitate your growth so the bible is saying and knit together compacted together the same word 
compacted together, knit together, increased with the increase of God. So you find for this body of Jesus Christ to grow and to increase, then it has to be fed and it has to be fed with the word of God. It has to be fed with the truth, speaking the truth in love that you may grow thereby. I would like you to note that in the church, all of us, we are not on the same level. In any given congregation in the body of Jesus Christ, every church, every church member, every child of God, all of us, we are not in the same level. And it is like that from the time of Jesus Christ. Uh, you find there are some that are called children in the faith. They're newly converted. Uh, they're newly believers. Uh, they are children. You find in the book of Galatians, the fourth chapter and verse number 19, they have been newly converted. My little children of whom I travel in birth again until Christ being formed in you. I'm showing you in the church like that body, there are some areas, there are some members that are weaker than others. There are some, some areas, some, some members that are stronger than others, but all of them, they are benefiting from the feeding. They are benefiting from this nourishment. First John, the second chapter, and first number 12. Uh, the Bible is saying, I light unto you little children. I light unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. These are new converted, newly converted saints of God. They are in the church. They are part of the body. They are members in particular in this body. But they are young in the faith, but they need to be fed. Uh, so you find there are different groups and stages in the church of God's people at different stages. So they all need to be learned. So I said they are young or other little children. They are little children. Then from little children we have young men. These are young men uh, that, uh, that have not stayed long enough in the church, but they, have, they are not newly converted, but they, they know about one or two things of the word of God. That is why Paul writing to Timothy or Titus in Titus chapter 2, verse number 6, he said, Titus chapter 2, young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. They are young. They are young men. Uh, they, they, they are full of uh, strength. They are full of... Uh, they are full of uh, uh, hot blood. They, 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 they can't handle things. But they need to be uh, taught uh, the word of God. They, are being, they need to be fed. Uh, to be taught to be sober minded. Uh, first, still first Peter. First John, sorry. First John chapter 2. First number 13. Uh, the Bible is saying, I light unto you fathers. You see that is another group of fathers who come back to that. Because you have known him. But he says, uh, part B of that, he said, uh, part B of that, he said, I light unto you young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. In other words, they are strong enough. These are young men in the, in the natural world. They are the people that are taken to war when it is time to go for war. Uh, these are people that are not old enough. Uh, they, these are people that they are strong. They can, they can lasso another man to the ground. In the Old Testament, they were to be taken to war. The men that were between the age of 20 and 50 years old. Uh, these are the young men. They were strong enough between the age of 20 and 50 years old. They were strong enough. They, 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 they could be committed. They could be given, they could be given less, uh, uh, their responsibilities. They could be assigned duties and they could perform duties. Uh, the they, they age between uh, uh, 20 and, that and, and uh, 20 and 50. That is why you find David started learning when he was 30 years old. Uh, because uh, at 30 years old, he is a young man full of strength. Even Jesus Christ started his ministry when he was 30 years old. Because at 30, you are still strong. You are very strong. So these are young men. But the, the Bible is saying that you have overcome uh, you have overcome the wicked one. The young in the faith. The young, they are strong. We have young men in the faith. These are people that are sent into the ministry to go and preach the word of God. There's, these are people that are sent for missions. They are strong. Uh, they can survive in whatever different conditions there is. They are strong. So these in the faith also, we have young men. Then we have the old fathers. They are called fathers. They are old. And that is why he says, I lend unto you fathers. 
because you have known him that is from the beginning in other words these are not Johnny come lately these are people that have seen the hand of God they have seen the power of God they have seen God demonstrating his power they know what God is capable of doing they have seen him they have tried him they have seen him uh, heal the sick they have seen him lay the dead they have seen him providing the needs so you'll find uh, in, 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 there are people that have, uh, they have experiences with God. Praise the name of the Lord. They have known him. He said, but be again of that. The last part of it, he says, because uh, you have known, uh, I, think, I think it's chapter 14. The Bible is saying, I enlighten to you fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. The fathers, they have experiences with God. They, has, they, have like, they are like David that said in the book of Psalms, the 37th 30, the chapter, he said in the book of Psalms, the 37th, I believe it is the book of uh, Psalms, the 37th chapter, he said, I have been young, verse number 25, uh, these is, uh, these is uh, fathers, these are people that have experiences with God. And the, 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 the man of God, when he is preaching, the elder, when he is preaching, he is factoring all that. That is why you should know it is not easy to keep a church. Because you have to make sure all these groups are taken care of. They are the young, the little children whose sins have just been forgiven. And they need to hear the word of God that they may grow thereby. Second, first Peter chapter 2, verse number 2, quickly I can, I can lead that. That they may grow thereby and as new born babes desire the sincere milk of the word. They are babies, they are little children. But they also need the milk. They need the word of God. That they may grow thereby. These are young people that have just believed. These are people that have, had just the word, have just had the word of God. They want to know more. They want to grow. So they need, they desire this word. The young people also, they need the word of God. They came to maintain their strength. And they, 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 they need to have that strength being renewed every now and then. So the fathers now, they have experience with God. Uh, 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 Psalms 37 and verse number 25. They have experience. Verse number 25, he said, I have been young. This is a father. Now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. In other words, they have an experience with God. They have seen the God of heaven providing for people when they were young, when they were little children, and now they are, they are old. Why? Because they have experiences with God. They say, I have been young. Now I'm old. Praise the name of the Lord. That is why John is saying, I enlighten to you fathers, because you have known him from the beginning. You have seen his, him, him work among his people from the beginning. You have seen him make a way where there seemed to be no way. You have seen him, him providing food where there was no hope of food. So we are talking about these different groups of people in the house of God. And all of them, they must grow. They must be fed. They must speaking the truth in love. So what I do when I come to you as a child of God, every minister of the gospel, he comes to you with the word of God that you may grow thereby. Back to Ephesians, the fourth chapter and first number, first number 15. The Bible is saying that speaking the truth in love that you may grow thereby. So that the church may grow. The church may, may get to the, to the state of, all of these groups, they may get to the level whereby they mature. They get to a level whereby they are no longer little children. The little children now will grow. The young people will have more experience. Old men will have more experience with God. And all of them now, the body of Jesus Christ, that it may grow thereby. The body of Christ may grow up into him in all things. That is in Jesus Christ, which is the head. We may grow in, in him in all things, in all things, in the things of this life. Anything that you desire, anything that you need, you may grow. Praise the name of the Lord. So you'll find that a child of God need to be connected to the source of their nourishment. Need to be connected to the word. First number 16, the Bible is saying, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint surprise, according to the effectual working in the measure 
of every part. In other words, you grow that you become beneficial. You become profitable to the church, to the rest of the body. Every part, every member of that body is fed and becomes strong and becomes uh, uh, stronger so that now it starts also providing, start also providing to the growth of the entire body. So it is for the, the growth of the entire body. So the Bible says, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. Uh, again, where we were in First Peter, the fifth chapter, uh, we were in verse number two. It says, feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. Uh, he says, uh, and don't be lord over them. First number three, you don't lord it over them. In other words, you become an individual uh, that, is, uh, that is given to encourage God's people. That is given to strengthen God's people. That is given to encourage so that they can grow. Praise the name of the Lord. They may grow thereby. That they may grow thereby as God's people. So it is for the benefit of the growth of the church. So Second Peter chapter 1, uh, if I may read, but maybe I read Second Peter chapter 3, verse number 18. I know we were there. The Bible is saying, but grow in grace. So you grow in grace. Now I'm bringing you here to show you that the growth is equivalent the growth in all things and the growth in wisdom and in knowledge and in peace is equivalent and measured with the growth in the knowledge. So that is why the more you know of God, the more mature you become. The more you know of the word of God, the more mature, the more increase you become in the knowledge of God, the more you get the grace of God. The more you have peace, the more you have, you have uh, wisdom, the more you have uh, all these things. The Bible is saying that you may increase in all things. You may grow in all things. So, but grow in grace and in the knowledge. So, that is why we feed you with the word of God. Speaking the truth in, speaking the truth in love. That you may grow thereby. So, this truth, the more is spoken, then you also grow. You grow in all things. The more you know of the word of God, then the more you grow in all things. That is why we feed. As I said, a church is also not only an organization and we have people paying money to, be, to go to an institution of higher learning to be taught on how to manage people, how to manage a church. But we need also to spend time to learn on how to make the church grow. To make an individual, a child of God, grow. And that is giving them the knowledge of God. Grow, but grow in grace and in the knowledge. Praise the name of the Lord. And of the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forevermore. So you grow. Second Peter, the first chapter and first number one, the Bible is saying Second Peter. Simon, uh, Simon Peter, a servant, of, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Verse number two. The Bible says, Grace and peace be multiplied. Grow. Be multiplied. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge. Now, this growth I'm emphasizing to say, like the natural physical body need food, literal food natural food, then the spiritual part of human being also need to grow and it can only grow through the knowledge. It can multiply through the knowledge of God, through the word of God, through this truth that we are speaking. But as a child of God, you may grow there by speaking the truth in love that you may grow thereby. We are speaking this truth in love that Having a desire like that mother will feed her child in love. Like that father will provide for the family in love. That the family may be nourished and grow thereby. Even as a preacher man, then this preacher man will feed, will speak the truth in love. That this child of God may grow thereby. So that when they grow, they may turn around. And start also edifying the rest of the body. Edifying 
the rest of the members of that body, the rest of the saints of God, may, they can benefit from you. Praise the name of the Lord. So, so that now we become people that are now the body can now be able to benefit from your growth. But before you grow, you need to be fed. You need to have a man of God that will help you to grow in favor, to grow in grace, to grow in, in peace, to grow in peace and grace be multiplied upon you through. It just, doesn't just come. Even this, the Bible is saying, John, the first chapter and first number 14, the Bible is saying, uh, and the word, the word was made fresh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten son of the father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. That is Jesus Christ, full of grace and truth. The Bible says, verse 15, John bear, bore witness, bear witness of him. Let me read verse 16, and of his fullness. That is the coming of Christ, the manifestation. The coming of Christ on the face of the earth. Remember, he came of his fullness. He came with grace and truth. So this truth carries with itself grace. So the more you know of this Word of God, the more truth you have, the more grace is bestowed over your life, the more peace you have, the more joy you have. You, in other words, you grow. And of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. Grow in grace. In other words, grace is not stagnant. You keep on growing. Some things that you could not deal with yesterday, Today you know more of God's word, you can deal with them. Because yesterday you were short in knowledge. You, are, you, 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 you didn't have all the knowledge that you have today. So the more you know of the word of God, then the more grace you have. The more peace you have, the more joy you have, the more grace and of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. Praise the name of the Lord. Grace for grace. In other words, the original translation Bible says grace upon grace. That is grace is added upon another grace. So yesterday I had a little grace. Praise the name of the Lord. But today, because I know more of God and that is why I desire to know him more. I desire more of this knowledge. I desire more of this truth because the more I know the more grace I get. The more I know, the more peaceful I become. The more I know, the more joy I have. So the more it is grace upon grace. And this grace comes through the knowledge. This grace comes, the more you know of God, the more you know of the word of God, the more grace then you have, the more things of God you have. So that is why every opportunity I have to listen to the word of God and to lead it. Then I grab it because I know I'll leave that place with more grace. I will leave that place with more of God's favor. I'll leave that place with more of God's covering upon my life. And that is why if you look to the, to the letters that Paul wrote, he opened with that prayer. He had a prayer upon God's people that they may have more of the grace of God. If I may lead First Corinthians, Corinthians, the first chapter and first number three. The Bible says, grace be upon you and peace. He started his letters saying, in other words, what he is saying, what I'm going to write to you, it is going to add more grace and more peace if you adhere to it. If you listen to what I'm going to write down from here, then it is going to be giving you more grace and more peace. The more you know of the word of God, the more grace you have. Many people say, I desire and I pray that God will give me grace. No, what you need is more of his word. Because when you know and you have more knowledge of his word, grace will just come, peace will just come. So Paul, every letter, most of his letters, he is opening with our prayer that he may grace be unto you and peace again second corinthians the first chapter and first number two second corinthians the first chapter and first number two the same statement grace be to you and peace 
from God our Father. Then he says, and the only way to have this is what I'm going to light in the next chapters. So he lights. And he said, by the opening, the desire and the prayer that I have, and me as a preacher, man, my prayer and my desire is that grace and peace from Almighty God may be multiplied upon you. But the only way, I cannot pray that over you. I can just give you the word of God and the more knowledge of the word of God the more grace and the more peace you have so I desire to, you to have peace I desire you to have uh, uh, this uh, grace but the only way I can be sure it will be there is to give you more of the word of God Colossians chapter 1 verse number 2 the Bible is saying to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Corossi Grace be upon you and peace. Grace be upon you and peace. How do you have this? And this is from God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. How do you get it? It is by having this knowledge. Grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge of our Lord, of our God, and our Savior Jesus Christ. And that is why we don't hesitate. Every time we have an opportunity, we come with this knowledge. With the truth, speaking the truth in love that you may grow thereby. In knowledge and when you grow in knowledge, then you'll have more grace and you'll have more peace. It is increasing. It is from grace to grace. The Bible said the early church and great grace was upon them all. Why was great grace upon them all? They continued daily in the apostles' doctrine. They continued daily in the apostles' doctrine, in prayer, in fellowship, and in breaking of bread. And the Bible is saying, and the Lord added that to the church daily. And great grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon them all because they continued. Praise the name of the Lord. In the book of Acts, the second chapter first number 46 and they continued daily with apostles with one accord in the temple breaking bread and breaking bread from house to house did they eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart and because of that the Bible is saying great grace is it now chapter 4 and first number 33 because of that the Bible say and with great power and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. Not some. And it was not just grace. It was great grace. How did they get the great grace? They continued daily in the apostles' doctrine. And this great grace caused them to find favor with all the people. It caused them to find favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily. Why? Because when you grow in knowledge, then you grow in grace. When you grow in the knowledge of the word of God, then you grow in peace. When you grow in the knowledge of God, when the more of the word of God you know, the more of the truth you know, the more peaceful and the more grace you have. And that is why, as a preacher man, then I come with this word. So the Bible is saying, of his fullness. When Jesus came, then he was coming to add grace upon more grace. So we, you, you may have been in another different of level of grace last year, but today you should be on a higher level of grace. Why? Because you have known more of him now. You have grown in the knowledge. You have known more of the word of God. You have known more of the truth. The more of the word of God you know, the more you grow in grace and also in peace and also in, in joy. Why? Because you know God. Praise the name of the Lord and of his fullness. First, uh, uh, John, John the first chapter and first number 16. And of his fullness have all we received the fullness. That is the truth. That is the truth. When you know more of this, then the more grace you have, the more you know of Christ, the more you know of God, the more grace you have, the more peace you have. Praise the name of the Lord.
And that is why as a preacher man, then we keep on teaching. We keep on giving you this word of God. Hallelujah. We keep on, and because the more you know, the more grace of his fullness. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, first Peter, second Peter, we were there. Second Peter chapter one, verse number two. Uh, were we there? The Bible is saying, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge. Through the knowledge, that is why I speak the word of God. Through the knowledge that I may know him, Paul said. Because he knew the more he knows him, the more grace he has. Paul had more grace. He said, and, 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 and God gave me an abundance of grace. An abundance. That means it was not common, no more grace. Because he knew God more. Because of the revelation. Because of the revelation. Then he had more grace. First number three. Second Peter chapter one, first number three. The Bible is saying, according as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertaineth unto life and godliness. That means you have everything you, have, you need. Praise the Grace, we say grace is unmerited favor. Grace is to have favor with God. Grace is to have everything that you want. When we say you have grace, we are saying you have everything that you want. You are not suffering. You have enough grace. In other words, everything that you need, the provisions are provided for. And this comes through the knowledge. According as he has given power, given his, his divine power, and according as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertaineth unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge, everything that we need, it is through the knowledge of him that have called us unto glory and virtue. In other words, the more you know of God, the more you know of the word of God, then the more grace is added. Grace upon grace. And that is why an opportunity like this, my brother, my sister, you take it. Because you know, you leave this service, you leave this session having more grace because you'll have known more of God. You'll have known more of his word. You'll have known more of his promises. You'll have known more of his covenant. You'll have known more of his operation. And the more you know about his power, the more grace you have, the more peace you have, the more provisions you have. Why? Because of his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. Grace grows. Grace is not stagnant. That is why... Paul, uh, Paul is saying, when I was a child, he had the grace of a child. When he was a young man, he has the grace of a young man in the faith. When he became a mature man, when he became a father, he had the grace, abundant of grace. Measured upon him. Now he has more grace. And as a child of God, the more you know of God, I want to tell you, the more you'll have more grace. The more grace you have, the more of his favor you have, the more of his peace you have. And that is why we don't take these chances when God has given us to listen to the word of God. Don't listen to the truth, but we may grow thereby. Praise the name of the Lord. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse number 2, I think that is where we are. Verse number 3 we have led, and verse number 3 is what we are leading, that we may be able... According as his divine power, praise the name of the Lord, according as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through, it is through the knowledge of him that I have. So when the more you know of God, and that is why as a child of God, we desire to grow in knowledge. The Bible is saying you grow also in knowledge. You grow in knowledge. Is it in the book of uh, Second Peter? We were there. We were there. It says Second Peter chapter three, verse number eighteen. But grow in grace and in the knowledge. So you grow in knowledge. So not so when you grow in knowledge, then automatically you have the grace of God more and more upon you. Praise the name of the Lord. That is why we speak the truth. 
in knowledge, we in, in love, we speak the truth in love, we speak this word in love to you so that you can grow there by you can grow in the things of God you can grow in the word of God praise the name of the Lord and the Bible says uh, 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 in the book of Colossians the first chapter and first number nine he says for this cause we also since the day we had it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will you may be filled we have desired that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So every day there's a desire, there's a prayer in my heart. That is why I come to you every Wednesday, come to you every Friday, come to you every Sunday. There's a desire in my heart, there's a prayer that you may grow in knowledge. Because when you grow in knowledge, you'll also grow in grace. And also you'll grow in peace. In other words, you'll have everything. You'll have everything that you desire. You'll have everything, everything that you need, everything that you desire in your life. God will provide for you. Praise the name of the Lord. So that now when you grow, you start benefiting the whole body. Colossians, the second chapter. Verse number 19, we were leading. That you may increase and holding and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bounds bands having nourishment ministered it is ministered i am a minister of the gospel i minister like that nurse like that chef will minister will give food that mother will give food to that child to grow even the minister of the gospel, they speak the truth in love, praying that this child of God will be nourished, and they will increase with the increase of God. They are no longer going to remain babies, but henceforth be no more children. Praise the name of the Lord. They are fed that henceforth Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and first number 13, it says, Till we all come to the unit of the faith and to a perfect man and, and, to the, and of the knowledge, that is a thing, and of the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man, not now as a baby. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse number 14, that henceforth be no more children. So we grow. We are no longer little children. But we are fed now and we grow. We are no longer young people in the faith. We grow. We are no longer, now we are fathers. We are people that are mature in the things of God. First number 15, speaking the truth in love. That we may grow thereby. May grow, you may grow thereby. In the word of God, you may grow in the knowledge. Praise the name of the Lord. That you be no more children anymore. Toast to and fro. First number 16, the Bible is saying uh, that, uh, that I, first number 16, of whom the whole body, from a uh, body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint surprised, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making, maketh increase of the body. So the body grows because of you. When you grow, then the whole body grows. Because you are edifying, the Bible is saying, the increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So we edify. You help. The Bible is saying, 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, and verse number 26, and it says, you have to edify all of us. Why? Because we are no longer babies. We are mature now. How is it, brethren? How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you have a psalm. Look at that. They, 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 are, they are gifts. These are gifts that have give, been given to mature people. They are no longer babies. And whatever every part is doing is to edify the whole body. Whatever the hand is doing is for the benefit of the whole body. Whatever the ears are doing is for the benefit of the whole body. Whatever the eyes are doing is for the benefit of the whole body. 
Praise the name of the Lord. So how is it now when all of us are grown up after receiving this truth, after receiving the word of God, the knowledge of the truth, and we have grown in the knowledge of the truth, then we also grow in the way we administer our gifts. Whatever we do for the benefit of the whole church, whether it's in the media team, then they are give, given that grace. They have grown and whatever they are doing is for the benefit of the entire body. They can't say, we'll record the sermon and we'll take it to our homes and our families and we'll enjoy it. No, they are doing it for the whole body. That is the church. Whether it is the ushering department, whatever department it is, whether it is the preacher man, whatever he is doing, is for the defying of the whole body. Why? Because we are no longer babies. We are growing in him that you may grow in grace and in knowledge. So when we have more knowledge, then we grow in the grace. We have the gift. The Bible is saying, uh, we could come back here, Ephesians the fourth chapter and verse number seven. The Bible is saying, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift and the gift will come out of the knowledge. What do you know about God? How mature are you? And if you are mature, then you are given a gift. But that gift is coupled with a grace equivalent. Hallelujah. So unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And Paul recognized that. He realized he was given a gift equivalent to what he knew about God. And you as a child of God, the only way you can have it, do you desire to be served, to be used of God? Do you desire to be a minister of the gospel? Do you desire to be used of God to benefit the whole body of Jesus Christ? Then grow in knowledge. Be fed of this word. And the more you know of this, the more grace you have to minister and to be a profitable child of God into the church. That is why you grab every opportunity. You look for every chance to feed on this word, to feed on this food. But you may grow in knowledge, and the more you grow in knowledge, the more chance you have to have even the gift, and this gift will be, Paul said, Ephesians 3, that chapter, and first number Ephesians, the third chapter, and first number seven, the Bible is saying, Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me. So he was made a minister after the divine revelations, after knowing God, after growing in knowledge. Then he was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Do you want more grace of God? Then no more of him. No more of his word. No more of the truth. Have the knowledge. Grow in knowledge. And then when you grow in knowledge, you grow in grace. And when you grow in grace, then you'll be used of God in a greater way. Hallelujah. You grow, in a, you grow in knowledge, you grow in grace, then you be used of God to benefit, to benefit the entire body. God will now know this is a mature individual. God will know this is a responsible individual. Even when I give them a gift, they are going to benefit the entire body. They are not going to learn away with it. They are not going to say, this is mine, my, this is mine. As somebody said, this is mine, um, my, my wife, uh, our son Johnny, his wife asked for and no more. No, you are not going to say that. But you are saying to, to say, it's uh, the entire body. Praise the name of the Lord. So, 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter and verse number 6, so 26. So that way now we come, it is for the edifying of the body of Jesus Christ. The Bible is saying, how is it, brethren? It is supposed to edify all things are supposed to edify the church. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of, every one of you have a psalm. These are people that are gifted by the grace of God to have a song. They can sing. They have a gift of singing. And another one have a doctrine. He can teach the word of God. Another has a tongue and another have a revelation. Have an, and another one has a, a, have an interpretation. He said, let all things be done unto edifying. 
It is to edify the body of Jesus Christ. Let every, everything be done to edify. In other words, when you grow in knowledge, then you also grow in grace and you become a profitable child of God into the church, into the body, unto the body of Jesus Christ. And my duty as a preacher, man, mine is to make sure that you grow. What I do is to feed you, speaking the truth in love. But you may grow thereby. You grow in the knowledge. And once you grow in the knowledge, then you grow in grace. Grow in grace. And once you grow in grace, you become now, you get everything that you desire. God provides. God meets with you at your very point of need. And the duty of Bible study is to bring a child of God to that understanding. To be taught uh, the things of God that they may grow in knowledge. They may grow in the word of God. They may grow in the truth. And the more you grow in the truth, the more you are getting knowledge, the more you mature, then you become beneficial to the things of God and to the work of God and to the saints of the most high God. That is all what I'm supposed to do as a preacher is to teach the truth in love. That you may grow thereby. And once you grow thereby, then you have also, you grow in grace. Grace upon grace. Grace. So today you know a bit. Tomorrow you know more. You get to increase. You get to grow to another level. Praise the name of the Lord. They, these, these are things that are revealed. God, God doesn't reveal everything at go, at one go. But the Bible is saying, 1 Corinthians, this is 1 Corinthians, the, sec, the second chapter, and verse number 9, the Bible is saying, 1 Corinthians, second, uh, 1 Corinthians, the, the second chapter, and verse number 9, but it is written, I have not seen. You have not seen everything. You have not heard. You have not heard everything that you are supposed to hear as a child of God. That is why you keep on tuning in. That is why you keep on coming to church. Neither have it entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. You don't even know. You don't even know the magnitude of God's blessings and God's favor upon your life. What he has set aside, prepared for you. You don't even know. But the more you come to the house of God, verse number 10, the Bible is saying, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. So when you come to the house of God, the more it is being revealed unto you. The more you get to know, the more you tune in, the more you listen to that preacher man, the more you listen to the word of God, the more it is being revealed. But I has not seen. Don't say, I've been in church long enough. I have seen all what I have to see. No, I have no seen. Don't say, I have heard all what I have to hear uh, to hear in the house of God. I've been there for 50 years. No, I have not heard the things that God has prepared for you. But day by day, day by day, when you come to the house of God, then they are being revealed. That is why every service is better than the other. And it's very important. Because you'll know more than you knew yesterday. And the more you grow in knowledge, my brother, the more you grow in grace. And the more grace you have, the more of divine favor you got. The more of divine provision you have. The more of divine covering you have. So the more you desire of the word of God. And that is why David, Paul desired to know him. That I may know him. And the power of his selection. Praise the name of the Lord. So what I'm saying, saints of God, value every teaching. Value every service. Value every Bible study. It, will bring, it is bringing you more closer to that level where you can have grace upon grace. And when you have more grace, then life becomes easier for you. Hallelujah. You can be able to conquer. You can be able to overcome. You can be able to survive by the grace of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is, that is, that is all my duty. That is my duty as a preacher man. I don't have any other duty. It's just to feed you with knowledge. 
like that mother father will feed you with the natural food this preacher man feeds you with the spiritual food that you may grow there by my desire is to have every one of the child of god grow and come to the level of maturity where they'll have no more knowledge and then more of the grace of god and more of the grace of god they have the more blessed they are the more favored of the lord they are and that is my prayer praise the name of the lord god bless you that is what i was wanted to talk about today that you desire more opportunities and, and look for more chances to be in the house of god or to tune in and listen to this preacher man that you may grow in knowledge knowing when you grow in knowledge then you'll grow in grace praise the name of the lord and then you become dependable you become reliable god can give you gifts to benefit the whole body to benefit the church god bless you thank you so much i want to pray for you that god may give you that desire for the god in the name of jesus i thank you for the word of today my god admonishing us jehovah to desire more of your word more of your knowledge that we may know more of thee O god almighty that the more knowledge we have of god then the more grace we are going to have as we walk in this life's journey the more divine favor divine blessings we have jehovah dear god i pray creating us that hunger of the truth of the word of god that even father every time we have an opportunity we'll be quick to hear we'll be quick to listen in the name of jesus that father we may grow in this knowledge jehovah master that dear god will be nourished and dear father as we are getting nourished jehovah master we become stronger we grow from being little children dear father because the level of our little children my god little child their level of grace is also little the young man their level of knowledge also determined is also by the grace the level of their grace but the old men the fathers them that i have uh, are seasoned them that i have more of your knowledge they have more grace father god i speak this in the lives of god's people more grace over their lives the more they know you the more grace you dispense over their lives and them that have not known thee jehovah i pray my god let them start this start this journey to be little children because their sins will be forgiven dearly dear my god they are given birth into into this family and will give them the word of god that they may grow thereby and the more they grow the more grace of god they have the more peace and the more joy they have in the name of jesus dear god i speak this to the entire assembly oh god almighty to the entire congregation oh jehovah master that they may grow my god in knowledge and in the grace of god father god i thank you and i bless your holy name in jesus mighty name i do pray amen and amen god bless you god be with you and god give you more of his grace in jesus mighty name amen thank you god bless you